Hey guys, welcome to episode 19 of Nemcast, and today I've got Al from Optac, the kingdom, and Ollie from Tropic Thunder on, and we're going to be discussing what happened at Rumble in the Jungle, which was a little event we went to the other weekend, and just generally talking about Optac. So, um, yeah, we'll get this quick advert out of the way, and we'll be back in five seconds. Cheers, chaps. Hey chaps, this is just a quick little ad break before we get back to the podcast. Now, this isn't even a paid advert, we're not sponsored, we're not affiliated with these guys financially in any way. But they have done our merch, and that's Invictus Morale. I was so impressed with the company's sort of work, and how they liaised with us, and how the whole process worked, I thought, you know what, it's well worth giving these guys a shout out. So, they do all sorts of stuff from caps, like the one I've got on, or this multi uh, Tropic Multicam one. They do leather patches, they do normal patches, uh, wallets, accessories, all sorts of custom bespoke things to suit you. So I really do advise you go and check out their website, which will be in the link in the description below. And I'll also just stick up their website here. So that being that, we'll get back to the podcast. Cheers, chaps. Speak to you soon. And we're back. So do you want to introduce yourself? So start with Al. Uh, hi guys, I am Al. I am the site manager of Optac, uh, the Kingdom, and yeah, I uh, run the behind the scenes uh, alongside Rob, the owner. Sound and Ollie, you're part of the Tropic Thunder Group, aren't you? Yeah, so just just another airsofter. Have to be part of a a bigger group. Uh, yeah. that came about sort of I think we're about twelve months ago, eighteen months ago, something like that. At a similar event to this. Um, uh, yeah, and we've all just been playing together ever since. Mm -hmm. Now, for context, the Tropic Thunder Group formed around one of the Ascension Rumbles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's you see, I, I've been brought into the Tropic Thunder Group quite late on, really. Um, but you guys formed at what was it, the first Ascension Rumble? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. the first it was kind of weird because obviously everybody went to the first Rumble as separate people, um, nobody knew each other, maybe a few friends went with each other. Um, and then like I went with a mate, uh, and then I met Ross, who's one of your sponsored players. And sponsored then... liabilities. <laughs> <laughs> Even I yeah. know Ross. <laughs> Everybody knows Ross. Everyone knows him. If you've not if you've guy. not seen him, you've definitely fucking heard him. Yeah. What you a have guy. definitely heard him. Um and then we all met around a campfire one night, and then yeah, there's about sixteen of us the first time, and then it's grown from there to mm. thirty plus now. And like like we said, the Ascension Rumbles have actually grown along with it. Now, the latest event, which was hosted at Optac, was Rumble in the Jungle, which had, if I'm not mistaken, it was Kiki Mustang, Airsoft Alphonse, and obviously the lads from Ascension. So how did that come about, Al? Uh, truthfully, it was a bit of a random uh, sort of conversation. So it was... Um... It was kicking Mustang had come to one of Ascension's events uh, alongside uh, Tropical Thunder, who... I mean, I fell in love with them guys that day. What what an absolute group of lads! Like as a bunch a, of raging autists. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> we, brought the, like, we brought the chaos from day one. <laughs> it was amazing. As a as a site manager, as a as a even as a marshal, or to have a group of lads like that, it just makes the day. It makes our day so much easier. And you know, truthfully, the enjoyment comes back, which is it can be difficult at times to find um it does come it comes maybe you know a few times a day with these guys it was just non-stop all day it was fantastic uh so um yeah mustang came along he I, I as far as i'm aware really enjoyed the site really enjoyed what we did and wanted to host an event um mm -hmm. you know for, I, I would imagine a lot of people would agree it happened pretty quickly um uh, Far yes, it was than, very uh, short notice. Yeah, far quicker than I would have liked, but you know, <laughs> that's what I'm there for. That's my job. And uh Rob got in touch with me and said, um, you know, we want to do this event, let's make it happen. What do we need to do? And I just, you know, after probably about two or three days of just praying softly to myself, we uh, <laughs> we, we put it together. We came together with it and um yeah, that's that's rumble in the jungle twenty twenty four, baby. It's what we do. Nothing like a bit of pressure, you know. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's go into how how quick it was then. That's a good jumping off point. So normally yeah. with an event like that, because you guys tend to run little battle sims quite often, don't you? Like, yes. uh, look, is it a full weekend event you normally run? Uh, so we run we run 
once a month we run a battle sim event that is at least an eight hour event uh there have been conversations about smaller ones but truthfully we we, we enjoy the bigger events so uh, so we've been running tens and twelves and generally it becomes a weekend event not so much mm -hmm. on the airsoft side of things we'll have the 12 hour day but we do offer we offer free camping friday night saturday night there's well there's always a member at least one member of staff normally me but there's always a member of staff on site for both nights and truthfully there's a, usually a few more we get the fire going we have the social side of it so it does become a weekend event yeah it becomes like a a, a regular thing for it's, let's be honest it's mostly going to be blokes um who yeah. turn up it's, it's it, it just seems to be the running yeah. trend doesn't it it's, it's nothing against there's nothing stopping girls from coming but let's we do be honest, have a number of, uh, of ladies that join yeah, us quite regularly I not i've noticed uh, you had really some good. some ladies knocking about but when it comes yeah, to yeah. sweaty camping in a field <laughs> drinking yeah. next to a campfire yeah. and smelling of sweat and just awfulness yeah. it's going to be a fucking bloke doing that more often than not yeah um stuff like that really helps make a site um, I've got a bit of a site in planning coming up. It's a couple of years away yet. And one of the things we wanted to do is offer camping the Friday and the Saturday. It does make a huge difference because it Absolutely. makes that sort of that yeah. um, that capture range of your site instead of it being like a, a two hour capture range where someone will go, I'm not driving further than two hours. All of a sudden they might think, well, I don't mind a four and a half hour drive if I can stop the night before and the following night because it helps break it up a little bit. Absolutely. So, so the site itself, uh, moving on from sort of, because you obviously run the little battle sims, it's a big site. It is a big, big site. How yeah. much of that site did we actually fucking play? <laughs> ah, right. Depends who you ask. It's like asking a man how big is, uh, you know, it depends who you ask. Truthfully, around about a third. Right. How many acres is the site in total? So the site is 230 acres and it's 200 playable acres because truthfully there are sections that you are just not going to get through. Um, I will actively tell people to avoid certain areas, but you know, to go out and start sectioning places off and to start mm -hmm. putting fences, it, it, it's not realistic. So it's easier for, um, for, for either me or the marshals to actually just be active on that and yeah. just say, guys, don't go X place. Yeah. But the, the, the site itself is, it's massive it's absolutely huge we once did a, a battle sim a few years ago and it took us three and a half hours to patrol the perimeter and i can imagine by, that actually, by, by saying patrol it yeah. wasn't like a, a bumble along but it was you know it was weapons ready mm -hmm. but it took us three and a half hours and it fucking was fantastic hell. We didn't see a single person, <laughs> but fuck it. It was a fucking serious walk. It was great. It was, yeah, yeah. The, the, the place is massive. It is. It's a cool site overall. What were your thoughts on the site, Al? It's, it feels endless. Mm. It does It does feel <laughs> endless. Like, you can walk in any direction for a good amount of time, not see anyone, and then, <laughs> you know, find your way back somewhere. We... Uh, like uh, Court said, Alphonse and Mustang were there. And we definitely took Alphonse to see a lot of the English countryside. <laughs> like, yeah. We, we yeah. went we went for a good walk in the woods before we found contact again. It was uh yeah, it was it was so we amazing. actually cut we cut the size down uh, not so long ago. So the what we found was that um they you know a and b teams were just following each other around on a, yeah. on a massive area just walking um, to me yeah you you know and, and let's be honest it, I, I, whatever battle sim mills sim, whatever you want to go so you want to start fucking shooting people that's the idea yeah, yeah, of yeah. airsoft like what you know when did that stop the idea is you want to shoot somebody so this yeah. whole following was like well no. there's no action so we we made a conscious decision to cut the site down so that this action could happen, but still retain that potential of yeah, a lot of flanking but at potential. At some is. point, you are you are going to meet. <coughs> so you know that got the adrenaline pumping really because mm. at any point something's going to happen. Um, and yeah, it, it is it is a massive site. It's uh, yeah. One thing I noticed about that site is it's incredibly varied terrain. So is it an old quarry, if I'm not mistaken, like a sand yeah, quarry? Yes, so it's an old uh, it's an old disused quarry. Um, mm. I, I, I'm afraid I'd love to sit here and give you the last hundred year history on it, and I can't. But it is an old quarry, so you will find crevasses. There's cliff edges. There's 
there's all sorts there, there mm. is literally anything you can think of you're most likely going to come across it and you can go from point a to point b within 30 feet of each other and actually the, the vegetation changes and yes i noticed that yeah. yeah it's it's it really is a, a challenging place mm. to be that i, I noticed you what, can do very well when we were playing there's some areas which are like a proper dirt track which you could yeah. drive a normal car on quite fine and then all of a sudden you drop off the edge and you're in a full swamp a full-on yeah. swamp like if you go in there you're getting piss wet through and well stuck yeah. like boot sucking swamp and yeah. uh yeah, it's the terrain is really quite fantastic. You've got some really good sort of elevation as well, some real yeah. height differences. Oh, it's, it's horrendous! If you're wanting to, <laughs> yeah, it'll break the, it'll break a strong man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> by the end of the day, uh, I checked my watch and we'd done like 400 meters of elevation difference throughout the day. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, uh, I was more of a, I'll just walk the flat area. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I just drive the go up the hill. <laughs> You drive the pick. You drive the truck. You've got the right idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's an issue but, that's too far away from the track, it, it'll resolve itself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just listen and see if things improve. Yeah, that's just, that's that's another thing I want to move on to. You guys have vehicles on the site. Are they do. always used? And what do you have? Absolutely. So uh, we have invested a serious amount of money into the vehicles and they are a huge game changer for us, given the fact that we are such a massive, massive site. At the moment, currently running, we have uh, two 110 Land Rovers, so we can fit roughly about eight in each. We have got a 90 Pathfinder. That we can't fit too many in that, but it's still what a beast she is because it's we've got a gun That's seat the on it. That's mount, isn't it? Yes, yeah. we've, we've like it's a bit shit set up there when you get shot at, but actually, what a sick place to be! It's, and it's an I'm, experience to try and stand oh, up in that. And when we you do have, it, we do have um, we've got two LMGs that fit that. We're just having problems feeding at the moment, so we've got a guy uh, who's looking at it very closely, getting the the, the full working, full airsoft working LMGs. Mm. Um, so I, I'm kind of like I don't want to run them until they're working properly, and we, yeah. we do have a guy on with that um well, excuse me we've got most recently we've got what i i have now named bertha like oh there's a story behind bertha like i drove that for 230 miles at 32 miles an hour so for clarification and, as you're mentioning their vehicles i'll get you to send me pictures and i'll stick them up on the screen so people no can see what's what because they are cool yeah. they are sick um bertha was uh rob will sit and blame me for the purchase of that i did nothing it was no to me anyway we bought it off a guy in uh, north yorkshire and i very cleverly said oh well it'll cost a lot to, to deliver it i'll get the train up and i'll drive it back there's actually a video knocking around somewhere of the journey it was horrific it was absolutely <laughs> horrendous i had two punches sat the side of the motorway she's a 1959 ex French Simca unit like try and find two tires for that bro like I just wanted to die <laughs> this is shit like They're fucking anyway, sticking tractor tires on the fucking yeah thing. I'm thinking Honestly, it's just gonna be tractor tires I got a I got a home to my house uh, in near Preston I still that was halfway I had to get one of a guy a guy that I know who's uh he's an agricultural mechanic to come out and have a look at it luckily he managed to get it going for us we then, I had a mate of mine came, uh, Cam, who's part of Optac as well. He came, followed me in my car. We got another punch. <laughs> I had to ring the same guy. To, honestly, we could sit here all night and just discuss the birth of getting to site. It was unreal. However, she's an absolute animal and she can fit around about 25 in the back. So, you know, between all the vehicles, we can, we can move a serious amount of people at once. Mm, uh, yeah. In the convoy, it's pretty good. We have, uh, it's actually my old my old car my old pickup um i was getting a new car and rob said look you know we could do something like that on site so i've gone from now driving it as a daily that there's only me really that drives it on site so uh she's she's a, she's great so that's what we have as the marshall vehicle so that's the, the navara that is, isn't it that's the navara yeah so mm -hmm. the beauty of that is i can get from point a to point b pretty quickly so that puts the need for having i having all these marshals on in high vis vest we don't need it because i can either pick somebody up that's a player marshal or i can pick rob up and we can get to a situation pretty quickly mm -hmm. that's truthfully very rare but i can still get there 
quickly and get it resolved as quick as possible. So yeah, yeah. Every every vehicle has a job. Every vehicle on a game day will have a select driver that I will brief that driver on what they're doing for that day. And uh, the drivers are the shit up. The the very good off road drivers. The very good at, at yeah. The the they're excellent at what they do. I didn't feel like there was a safety issue either because when you hear vehicles now soft, you always think fuck. You know, it's, it's going to be an insurance nightmare. There's gillies yeah. knocking about. You're going to end up with a fucking roadkill as a ghillie wedged under your wheel, picking it out with a stick. You yeah. know, that sort of thing. And it's actually not too bad. I genuinely thought it might be an issue, but it, it's fine. It's genuinely So fine. all our drivers go through uh, quite a rigorous briefing, like you say, the insurance and mm. things like that. You know, it, um, it, it, it becomes a logistical nightmare. So they all go through a very rigorous training and selection. Uh, I say rigorous training, like, like you know, there's probably going to be people that go, how rigorous? You know, they, they, they are they are assessed on their ability to drive. Number this one, one internet got a neck beard like saying this. actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I get that. Cheers, guys. But yeah, um, you know, they, they, they are assessed on their driving. They have to have a driving yeah. license. That's golden rule. Uh, I will take them out. Um, and it's an agreement between Rob and I um, that the X, Y, and Z person will be a driver and then they are monitored closely whilst driving um yeah. you literally hit the nail on the head mate that's our biggest risk is you've got mm -hmm. a ghillie fled at the side of the road that nobody can see and so i will come straight onto comms and tell the lads you know you've got x y and z player in such a place i'd be wary of that and also, we do limit the you know these vehicles aren't flying around site. They're not. No, no. no they're they're not not, you talk. You're no. talking like they're not. You know, the fast, the faster than walking pace. Uh, but I, if I jogged, I could probably keep up with it. If I didn't yeah. slip face first into the mud. and that's in a convoy. <laughs> so generally, the vehicles are used as a, they're used as a shield for people when we're when we're coming yeah. into the villages or we're coming into places. Like, yeah, I'll get alongside this. I'll drive you in. Um, they're not used that much, really. We will set up a certain area. Oh God, excuse me. We'll yeah. set up if we think there's something that's needed, we can adapt very, very quickly as a team and say, actually, we need 30 players mm -hmm. in said area. We'll get you there quickly. And and again, it's comms, just right, boys, convoy from X point to Y point. I'll see you there. And everyone yeah. convenes. Everyone's yeah, the, the, we have we have some great, great team that really do know what they're doing. And it works. It's just, yeah, yeah it something works we really saw well. at both events, didn't we? So mm -hmm. The, the first weekender event, the sort of test one, and the second one. I missed out on that one, really. Yeah, um, there was there was a lot of, we need a dynamic movement of a lot of people really quickly to change what's happening in the game. We'll do it quickly. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. right, everybody in, now we're going. We could completely mm -hmm. change the whole dynamic of a game within five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Like, literally, I not, that. not an exaggeration. We can be there, we can be together within a couple of minutes. We can have guys loaded up in 60 seconds and we can have them move to another point within a couple of minutes. And, mm. uh, you know, we can change the dynamic, which is where Rob and I will keep a very close watch on how the gameplay is unfolding. If, it, if it's, you know, blues uh, or bands and no bands and no bands are kicking the shit out of the bands, we can change that. We can yeah. change that. So don't piss us off because we can change your day. <laughs> yes, if we can really ruin your day in five minutes. Yeah, we can change it quickly. One one thing well, I yeah. really appreciated was obviously it's a full weekend event that we attended, and people get knackered throughout the day. They go back to the safe zone to reload. It's quite a walk back to the safe Just zone. Yeah. <clears throat> but each team had like a fob, so it's like a, yeah. the main base where they sort of respawned. They kept the objectives, that sort of thing. Now, there was like a rotation of vehicles going all the way around these fobs and taking people back and forth from the safe zone. So if you were, you'd just walk back to the safe zone, you'd had something to eat, you'd reloaded, and you were just sort of toddling back out, one of the marshals would literally pull alongside you and say, there's space in the back, jump in. Yeah. And it just it just adds a bit of something to the day. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a bit of a core memory for people, especially if you've never sort of been in the back of a Land Rover with all your kit on and it's, it's quite a vibe, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You know, knocking about. It's good for the morale as well. Yeah if, you, yeah. if you're trying to keep people like motivated all day, if it's piss wet through and you've got to walk from, it gets you know, your room. car all the way back to your fob to drop some stuff off to then get back engaged, it's like, do you know what? After lunchtime, people are going to be cold. They're going to mm -hmm. go to their car, get something warm and be like, do you know what? I'm not going back out. But yeah. If they think, yeah, do you know what? I can get a lift back out. I'll stay warm, and then I'll go straight back into the fight. 
it's like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, massive difference, massive difference. Now, one thing I noticed during the event was the teams who ran comms really severely benefited over the weekend because I know the Tropic lads, we sort of had what we'd sort of call a radio operator type setup where one of the lads would stay back at the FUB and he'd liaise with the sort of separate teams and it made a big difference. Is that sort of a regular occurrence on your site? Do you get people doing that or is it more of just a skirmish uh, setup? So comms, comms at Optac, here's a, here's a black hole. Here's a, yeah, it's, um, I, I have gamed for a number of years and I'm a big believer in comms. If your team is shit at comms, I'm going to flatten you. I'm going to absolutely rip you apart. And we have always struggled with comms mm -hmm. because of the terrain. But if you work it properly and you work as a unit and as a team, you can dominate comms. Uh, it's just that it is purely and utterly the nature of the terrain. Uh, we've tried all sorts. We've tried real steel, the, the you know, the 152s or whatever they are, the, you know, the ARCs and things like that. We've yeah. tried all sorts of things and actually nothing works. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's so like if you speak to Rob, who's the, Rob's ex military, you know, like he said, not even in the military comms don't work. You know, it, you, you're lucky to get working comms. So, what I try to introduce with the teams that I command, or if, if I get involved in that sense, is relay information. If you've got people at points A, B, and C, A and C cannot talk to each other use point b and relay mm -hmm. relay that information i know i know tropical thunder i clocked onto you guys straight away like you were straight on that you realized that that you needed to relay information if and it was can't... it was trying to pass that information was the difficult bit like you said yeah. we talked earlier about the elevation difference and the tree cover it yeah. doesn't want to move that distance so the, 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 the radio waves learned... just will not penetrate they won't go no. through. the thing we learned from the first one and the second one was putting somebody in your fob that's got enough, just enough to reach everyone as everybody spreads out from you and you've got one guy in the middle, he yeah. can still speak to each person and it just allows you enough just to say, okay, I'm at, like you said, point C, I need to know what they're doing at point A. I'll ask B to ask A Yeah, and, yeah. and suddenly it all comes together. Mm. We it had a did guy make a huge on difference. Uh, a couple of months ago and he was getting really pissed off. He's he's he'll know he'll know who I'm talking about by watching this. But he's a he's a current serving soldier, and uh, he, he was getting really really pissed off about comms. I, I said, dude, you you know this. Come on, you know this. Like, do what you know what to do. And and, and he sort of settled himself down. And he was only at I'm you know there's going to be a number of people that don't know these locations. But he was at Checkpoint Charlie, and he was only trying to contact Black Site that was. 150 meters in in you know as the crow flies and yeah. he couldn't get through but he knew that he had a player down that track that was 75 meters away so tell him and relay it and all of a sudden the comms started to happen all these different things started changing and it was amazing to actually stand back and witness this happen mm -hmm. and he clocked that oh shit, yeah if i relay that it'll work but actually i can't reach simple 150 meters so it's challenging but once people clock it and get on it, they go, "Oh shit, yeah, actually, I can, I can dominate here." And it's it's yeah. impressive. It, it really is. Yeah, and I mean that's moving back to the layout of the site. So the the third of it that we actually played, there's a lot of structures. There's a hell of a lot of structures because I just heard mm. when the lads, you know, we sort of got invited along. They said, "Look, it's an old sand quarry. You've got a lot of woodland. There's a bit of a swampy area, and I thought there's going to be two sheds." There's going to be two fucking sheds. That's all there's going to be. Because <laughs> that's just sort of what you come to expect from a lot of airsoft sites in the UK, yeah. especially Woodland, hmm. is very sparsely spaced buildings that they'll call objectives and then thick, dense woodland. But actually, it's incredibly well built up in the areas. You've done a really good job of getting those structures placed where they should be. There's lots of two-story stuff. It's quite technical, some of the bits. Like the main fob for our team during the weekend was fantastic, and that's just what's made of scaffold boards. Yeah, I think there's. I, th I saw a video. Yeah, I saw the video you guys put up of the Optac uh, promo video for. Yeah. I think it was the the actual main event where you were building that structure. It yeah. worked incredibly well. It makes a huge difference to how the site plays. It really does. When you've got it, it 
very much reminds me of for those who have been to it is is uh humber airsoft you know the, yeah, the, yeah. the sand quarry down there they've got that fob in the middle now i liked humber but the the problem i found with that site particularly is they have a village on one side and then just the fob there was two main points of interest yeah. whilst in comparison you guys at optac have a long sweeping village another village at the other side a main fob there there's a little uh base down at the bottom and God knows what else that I probably missed. There's just <laughs> stuff everywhere. There's yeah. so much stuff to find. There's so many little tracks. It was such an interesting site to knock about with. And so just when had, you think, um, go on. Well, sorry, I was I was going to say with the, the the two differences in the villages, we've got old village mm. and new village. So uh, yeah, there's 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 quite a stark difference. <laughs> so I'm I trying to sorry. It's all right. I'm trying to the, gauge which one old village and new village is because I played the one. If you're approaching from the safe zone, there's that one on your immediate right that sort of curves round. Yeah. I played so I played through there. Village. I played through Old Village and I played at the FOB, but I never got into the new village just by chance. I am truly heartbroken because that is where the, all of the new work has gone on. And yeah. Ollie's, Ollie's going to agree with me now. It yeah, that's what I was just going it on. It is a serious place down there. Like that I did, see, I did see it there. from a distance and I thought, that looks cool. I'll get there when I get there. And I just never ended up, I'd end up fucking about in that swamp bit, the other side of the road <laughs> <laughs> because every, all the what other we, players kept we, just walking down the main road. So it was just convenient. What we tried to, to design well. that I think we are there. Just, don't get me wrong. The work never stops. Um, so what you saw was old village. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a couple of structures in there mm -hmm. built exactly the same way. And it's, it's simplicity. It's just, we can throw them up. We can, secure them we can make them ridiculously strong and they are an amazing setup uh i won't be giving away our design by the way but <laughs> so when we uh rob rob sort of said look you know i want to i want to buy these scaffold boards because we know what we're doing with them we want to throw some structures up uh there's about oh rob might shoot me for this roughly about fifteen thousand pounds worth of timber just wood that's gone mm -hmm. into that um and so the new village we put up we put a building up and it was all a little bit of a we knew how it was going up but also it's been a number of years since one of these had gone up and was mm -hmm. you know how are we going to set this up and uh there was myself rob and woody down woody is like the absolute architect of the site he's the main guy that does all the building work he's, he's absolutely fucking unreal at it um so we were setting it up and, and our other two villages in old village have got ladders to the second story yeah and i i sort of said look I don't know about the ladders. I, I kind of, I like fighting over a stairway. Let's build a staircase. And it was like, well, how, you know, how are we going to do that? I said, Fuck it. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's just build it. You know, we, we've all got experience in building here. Let's, we can do this. Yeah. And we, we built a staircase, like a proper fully functioning staircase, which then the landing for it, uh, actually we just shoved the boards along and that created then a little, balcony out the front and it all mm -hmm. just came together so we built this yeah. one structure and i said you know what i'm i'm really seeing like uh, a cul-de-sac down here like a, a makeshift fake bolt i'm sorry i've just got it in my brain now you know when you're kids and you go out and you make dens yeah, yeah. Like just a bunch this of ultimate den making, going out with battery drills and making big dens <laughs> with battery <laughs> drills and beer like an yeah. adult money like this is fucking dangerous <laughs> yeah. that's literally what we we're doing like let's make a den man so yeah we we built it and i said to rob i was like this it looks like a the, i can see the road i can see the vehicles coming in. i can see a cul-de-sac mm -hmm. i can see an actual little attackable cul-de-sac and so yeah. you know each, we, we worked our way along putting all the buildings in and each one was specifically placed to represent a cul-de-sac and mm -hmm. that's exactly what's come along and actually we've, we've created something that is equally impossible to attack as it is to defend and so the challenge is fantastic and it's it's a an amazing area that's gone from not a great amount to the, potentially the flagship of of, of the kingdom it mm -hmm. really is a fantastic area yeah it, i mean from just walking past it you just think that's almost an airsoft site in itself yeah yeah, yeah. Certain, certain areas most airsoft especially a lot of airsoft sites in the uk they're very much limited by space and most of the areas, especially, I keep going back to it, is the FOB. That is 
big enough to be a small CQB site. It really so is. Which, sorry, Court, which which Bob were we, you actually based on? We from? were at the one, you know, with the, the, the sort of Quarried Hill, and there's the so track you, right, right, okay, top. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So you're Hilltop, so that's Hilltop. That is a sick place. I love playing yeah, there. Yeah, that that's is. That is. Yeah. Both attack, because, you know, you can sort of see what the attack is like when you're moving up to it. But defending it was fantastic. It's it's a difficult place to defend, especially if the team's working in tandem and they're attacking from different angles. Yeah. And it's just generally well designed. It's well thought out. And like I was trying to explain, areas like that are good enough to entirely run a skirmish session round. Because you know how most sites will do a skirmish session, like at our local MIA, we'll say, right, it's uh, attack and defend, and we're attacking the village or attack and defend and we're attacking the mortar pits or whatever it might be. That's big enough to run games like that really, really easily. And you could do multiple games over and not get bored of it. It's an enormous site. I can't stress that enough. So we normally section up into, we we go for three at the moment Mm -hmm. until we we, uh, expand into other areas of of the 200 acres. Yeah. We normally use one of three sites. So what we would call old village, now new village, I know, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> how original we're trying to think of a new name so if there's anybody that can come up with a new name for it fantastic so we've got old village new village and hilltop four and and we can run a full day in one of three mm-hmm. we generally try to use all three but obviously you know it, it's difficult to move yeah. a number of, of players to a certain area if we are you know to go back for dinner to site we will generally then drive people and move them to a different area mm-hmm. Uh, be it New Village or whatever it yeah. is, but uh, yeah. <coughs> oh, now, me. but going back to it, so going all the way back to the start, we said Rumble in the Jungle was very quickly sort of announced and very quick yeah. to launch. How the fuck did you manage all that then? I'd I'd rather not relive it if I'm honest, Courtney, but I'll try. <laughs> start start shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <With this> drink. <laughs> I haven't gotten anything strong enough in the house. Uh out so <laughs> where do I where do I start? Um it was worth every second of it. It was some serious work went in behind the scenes, physical, mental. It it, it, it was just like we have Rob is phenomenally experienced in running events. He's on the best part of 20 years. And, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, we were on the phone nonstop. We we uh, we live quite a distance away as well, so that can also add a bit of Yeah, it's, it's instead of just popping up calls. to build on Saturday, yeah. you, it's it's a whole escapade. Yeah. Getting up <laughs> and and we, we still continue to be a fully opening site. You know, we run weekly. Mm-hmm. And so it was like we need to set things up. Um it was it was interesting uh, it was a challenge but we i i strongly believe we overcame that we set up a lot of paperwork behind the scenes we set up a lot of planning uh the camping areas the social areas the marquee uh the the, the caterer it, it it took it took a fair whack of organizing but truthfully as a team it was manageable oh, i don't want to sound yeah i don't want to sound like an absolute knob but relatively simple eh, to a point mm. yeah um yeah we, we we got there yeah but it's it truthfully, feel... on the day on the day itself that's what we do there was nothing mm. different yeah and uh you know i had a, i had a conversation with rob and we were sort of saying look we you know we need we do need staff we need to select the right people we need to you know we need we need the right people in the right places and that i think truthfully that was the hardest thing for, for that i found i uh, I would imagine Rob possibly would agree, but to pick the right people mm-hmm. and, you know, a little shout out to them, they, they absolutely smashed it. And they were told they had a staff briefing from myself. They had uh, a full worksheet to work from was just do what we do. We don't, I don't want any fakery. I don't want any bullshit. Just do what we do and mm-hmm. see what it happens. Really well. it? You know, it, right, yeah. the, the start itself felt well run. It's the bit that, I was trying to wrap my head around really was from the time of right this is happening to it's got to be finished by this date what was that time span did you sort of have like a month um, or was it two months or what I sort think, of time span? i think off the top of my head around about i'd say about six to eight weeks mm. was was the the true from let's do this 
you know, date date organized yeah. to let's get yeah. this shit done was around about six to eight weeks. That's not too bad. Um, it wasn't. Uh, I probably, if you rewound about four weeks, I'd probably say it's nowhere near. But you know, now it's done. Mm-hmm. It, it was. I mean, there, there was always. I said this to Rob. There was always going to be an element of panic. There's always going to be an element of anxiety and of worry because hosting such an event is. You know, there's always going to be that. If there isn't, it's it's wrong, almost you know, it's, it's almost a make or break, isn't it? For some sites, because yes, obviously yeah. you've got your regulars, you've got your regular little events, but it sort of sets a bar as as a site reputation. If you've run yeah. an event of that size and scale and it went well, it will go down as I went to I went to the the event last year. It was fantastic. We should all go. And then all of a sudden, you've got another fifty percent more players at the next event. And it grows whilst it has the opposite effect, obviously, if it went a bit wrong. So I, I'd happily say it went fine from what I can gather. Yeah. Uh, from just the oh, feedback. What did you think, Cole? Yeah. From, from our side, I, to, to hear that you put that together. So from playing the, the one before to playing this one, um, yeah, massive pat on the back for the whole team, really, to put that together in the time. So, you know, you play it off like, oh, yeah, it's just New Village. We're just building a cul-de-sac. But when we played it the time before, it was like, what, two buildings? I think there was two yeah, structures was, yeah, in New. Yeah, was, and now yeah. there's, what, four, five? Uh, five. Uh, mm, I'm going to say six because, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, so you, there's, you've, you've technically built, like, six complete structures, yeah, structures yeah. in that yeah. time that do play well. That hot, Like Court said, you could play that whole area as a skirmish on its own yeah. um and the event did go seamlessly you know mm-hmm. it was like the recipe was already there um and you'd done it every week so that mm-hmm. i think that was the main thing as a as a player to just turn up everything was done there was nothing that was missing there was nothing that sort of went oh i thought there was going to be that and it fell short everything just went to plan and and the game played really well so no one thing I will ask is if you could have changed anything or if there's things you wish you would have sort of done, not done, who you would have invited, who you wouldn't have invited, that sort of thing. Is there anything that you think you'll change for the next event? So, cause I know you guys invited a couple of big retailers that were a bit of a no show and there's a few other bits that sort of maybe went awry. What were your thoughts on that? Are you going to change it next time or? Uh, truthfully from I think from us uh, a little bit more time to organize and mm. and, and to 100% confirm things um, like the, the retailer side I, I truthfully I would genuinely love to comment on but I don't really know what happened I don't think anybody does I think there was a, a lot of miscommunication miscommunication yeah um, which you know what shit happens is what it, it is. seemed to be it did um, to be like a time span issue I think that's truthfully what it was. You know, um, I won't. The, the, you know, the retailers that were um, that were believed that were coming are the, the great guys. I don't mm-hmm. think there was anything that was like uh, that I could comment on. Really, I think it was yeah. just a miscommunication and a mm-hmm. bit of a short notice type thing. Um, so, I mean, changing wise, uh, we have we have had a bit of a debrief and a bit of a conversation mm-hmm. that we would like to keep. Uh, a lot of it on the actual physical car park where you guys were there was a bit of a trek to the likes of the marquee that was a little bit unused um yeah. but that was a bit again a last minute decision to let's put it up and see what happens uh, nothing was a sort of oh god i'm pissed off that that's not been you know that's mm-hmm. not done it was yeah. a mm, that kind of didn't work so we'll, yeah we'll next time we'll change that tweak it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we are so open to to ideas mm. like you know i've said to loads of people my I, I practically sit on my phone replying to people all day, every day. Message me, tell mm-hmm. me, give me your ideas. What What do you want? You know, we're not we're not here to go. Ooh, that's a shit idea. No, tell me, what do you want? Because <laughs> yeah. I'll make yeah. it, I'll make it happen. I mean, you one know, one, one thing. Pers- well, there's a couple of things that I. It's not criticism more than suggestions. Is give it to me nicely, Courtney. Give it the to next me, baby. the next <laughs> events I'd run at that site personally would be a bit earlier in the year. It was yeah. cold at night. And yeah. it's, it's more of a, a gripe than me. You've got to be prepared if you're camping, yeah. obviously. Yeah. 
but there's a lot of fucking idiots who don't get the right sleeping bag for the right temperatures. Yeah. Uh, you're underprepared with a shit tent. It's going to happen. It's a big event. You, 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 you've got to plan for the worst case scenarios with people. Yeah. Personally, next time, it, you know, it's not, a, it's just a suggestion. I'd move it back no, a bit earlier. So I'll in the evenings, off. they're a bit warmer. It's going to be a bit drier because it's not quite as rainy around that time of year. I mean, it's fucking England. It's always rainy. <laughs> But it's it's a bit less boggy and that sort of thing, and also the chronoing area was a bit of a no no for me. Just right. the way, cause I really like the fact that you guys had access to that the the chalet thing and the toilets yeah. and the shower block. We'll get onto that in a minute. That was fantastic. Really, really good facilities for an event like that. I couldn't ask for better. My problem was the way the range was set out you had to sort of walk past the range to go to the toilet. Yeah. And it would have been fine if you took your iPro, which I did. But I saw many people just going, well, toilet is in safe zone. I'm walking past the fire range. People are plinking and you're walking past with no iPro. Yeah. And I think that was pretty much nipped in the bud fairly quickly. So, you know, next time, if anything, is maybe have a separate track to the toilets. Even if so you could it through. there was a little through. bit of... Um... I will take responsibility for mm. it because so we have we do have a designated firing range mm. that's uh, as you sort of come up the hill into the game zone it's on the right hand side I don't know if you noticed there was some tape I'd taped it off because obviously we're we're just not we're not set out for the number of people that were, that yeah. were turning up so um, we'd had a, a a very serious conversation of where do we put this because to Chrono potentially 300 people like if everyone was queuing mm -hmm. up was not it was an, yeah it'd be a nightmare um, yeah so then you know i sort of said well let's look at you know what's the worst case scenario with players there was 200 people on site so mm -hmm. it was it was sort of where can we get an area so we were looking around the areas and you know backstops backstops is a big thing for me be it airsoft or real steel yeah you need, yeah, a, backstop. You need a bit of we a don't know we you. yeah we don't know where that that round or that projectile is potentially going to land so i chose that area um, yeah i think the I choice is up, fine well i set it up and i thought this is going to be really hard to police with ipro and i kind of <laughs> what a dick move i made i thought well the rest softers they'll think <laughs> <laughs> mistake i'm yeah. saying no more all right i'm General saying no public. more yeah i'm it's, saying no more it, so I, I, if... all I'll say is that one dude walked past her and did that. So, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. So, Safety you know, is my passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know what? Like, there was a couple of times, uh, we call him Big Tom. We've got two Toms, one small, one's big. Mm -hmm. Do the math. Uh, big Tom came over to comms and, and he said, I'll, I'm really struggling here. There's people coming uh, coming past with that, without eye throw. And I said, look, dude, all we can do is mitigate the risk, uh, mm -hmm. tell them, but also make sure that muzzles are facing away. That's all we yeah. can do. Yeah. At this moment in time, we can, you know, you can't polish a turd, but you can roll it in glitter. Do what mm. you can do. And Tom was on yeah. it. He was all over it. And then uh, probably what you then saw is that nobody was allowed past then. Put, yeah. put your eye pro on. Like, mm. you know, it was it was dealt with. It was, I will I will fully preface. It was dealt with quickly. Yeah. Um, the, an easy way to mitigate that issue next time would be even just buy some netting and just run it. Yeah, so so you've, that... got the path, you've got the pathway, split the pathway yeah. in half. One half is for the chrono side. And treat it even if it's just temporary netting, just fucking stay. So that was plan A. Post. Was um, you know, let's get let's get these mm. things up. But it was it was so late in the day of deciding yeah. actually oh, where it's, it's going to go. Mm. It was yeah. like shit. You know, we've got we've got so much else to do. And it's it's more. Of, you know. Yeah, it's more. It's, well, no, it's listen, living learn for the next event. Board, isn't it? Mm. Take it it's on board living... and, and yeah, completely agree. Yeah. Apart from that, really, there wasn't anything to complain about. Now I will. It's it's. It's Nemcast. We're going to talk about the toilets. We Let's we have this. a habit of every every fucking. We started off. I'm not scared, mate. Nice. I'm not scared. Bring it on. <laughs> so we started this podcast by essentially when the NAF thing sort of went up in the air and the prices went all over the place. We started the podcast in sort of like response to that, and it just seems to be a running trend. Every site we go to, we review the site itself, how the staff were what the gameplay's like, that sort of thing. And the toilets seem to be like a pinnacle. 
because I've got mates who have a habit of messing themselves. So uh, there's no other way to put it. So, um, yeah. You, you're going to have a nice place to, to, to yeah, you know, take your ablutions, haven't you? Now, are those toilets always open during skirmish days, or is that like a big event situation? Uh, no, they are not open during skirmish days. We have got a portaloo that, mm -hmm. uh, God bless Woody, he keeps it so clean, it's ridiculous. Um they the toilets are sort of on request from the actual site itself so from Huntley woods themselves who are amazing they will open them as and when we need them however i say i say no on a skirmish day if we know we've got a busy day we will open them toilets mm -hmm. so we do have pretty much full access to them as and when we need yeah and the deal is is that us as staff members of, of optac is we will go in and have a bit of a clean up after so it's yeah, a great makes deal sense. Um, you know, we are looked after, we look after them, and that's it's 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 favors for favors, you know. It's, yeah. it's so, just to, to just to clarify, that other bit of the site that's like a what a wedding, not a wedding venue, but you sort it of is host... a wedding venue, actually. Oh, right, yeah, okay. it is. Yeah, they host weddings there, they do, they do, you can hire the whole place. Uh, we hired it that, that uh, particular weekend just for, for Optax staff. Uh, so you know, we, we wanted to look after them and make sure that they were comfortable, they were warm and happy, and and you know, so we hired the whole place. Mm -hmm. um and so that was a staff area staff only area there was nobody to go in there it was their little safe haven that they made their own you know um but yeah so th th that whole when you go through that separate when you go past the firing range and past the chrono all of that is a it is actually a wedding venue uh mm -hmm. or i mean if you fancy a holiday i'm not you know plug in the site like but if you fancy it it's uh it's a pretty cool it is it is, a, it is a nice uh, a really quite nice spot it's gorgeous yeah. it's absolutely stunning it, it's absolutely it, amazing so what what did you think of facilities in total ollie oh it's un, unmatched really it's, it's uh it's bougie is the best way yeah yeah <laughs> it's, bougie. it's a, i've not heard that one that's pretty cool i'll take that <laughs> it's it's above and beyond what you expect yeah to be fair it wins the crown yeah. for site toilet for me so far. I mean, a flushing yeah. toilet. What more do you want? Yeah, <laughs> flushing yeah. toilet, shower. A shower was just hot yeah, water. It is, it's actually that. the building is heated. You walk in and you're not going to sit on an icy cold bog seat, which is lovely, yeah. especially when it's fucking piss wet through outside. You're wet through. You're miserable because <laughs> you've been playing all day. Pissed all over it. <laughs> yeah, someone's pissed all over it. No, they're clean, well kept. It's it's proper proper yeah. nice. Now the camping facility itself that was essentially just the car park, isn't it? Um, yes, I will say for people who want to come to the next one as a bit of advice. <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> I was so I, to this. Bring so really, really fucking strong tent pegs because you're hammering those things into essentially just uh, limestone to dust. It's hardcore. Yeah, it's bedrock. <laughs> it's bedrock. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like we're walking to a mine because we've got this massive tent and. We had all the lads putting the pegs in, and there must have been about four or five lads hammering yeah. pegs in, bending tent pegs. It was funny. But uh, I'd rec I highly recommend bringing really good quality tent pegs, not just the flimsy fucking things, and also a ground sheet. Because when you're packing that tent away after that event, it's like wet sand that gets yeah. stuck to the bottom of the ground sheet of the tent. It's a nightmare to pack away. So a ground sheet for your tent is very, very important as well, in my opinion, because I had to do the whole scenario of trying to, clean and pack away a seven meter wide bell tent which is circular and it doesn't fit in my beast, workshop by the way what a yeah it's 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 yeah, good it's good um, i will say for the for, for the record it isn't the only camping area, area that we have it just mm -hmm. you guys seem to congregate around that area. we just went so this will do yes this is our yeah. space now well <laughs> we do have our stopped um, camps made we yes. we do have some pretty some pretty Gucci camping areas. So we have a, a complete section that is specifically for camping that is absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. It's under tree cover. The ground is soft. It's nice. It's it's you know it's lovely. There's also stone areas there where we do we didn't allow open fires, uh, particularly at that event, given the amount of people that were there. It, it was just it was a little bit like. Uh, a lot of people, mm -hmm. but there are areas when we have our smaller events that we do allow it. There's fire pits. There's all sorts. Um, we we opened up the grass area for that event that was just a little bit round the corner from where you guys were. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm doing my hand that's over here that is not really working, but anyway, it's up <laughs> round the corner. Um, so there are areas that you know. Granted, if you want to be in the area, bring stone pegs. You're going to be on the car park. Yeah, if you want to be quality. near your car. 
and want to camp with your car like i do i do that that's that's how i like to camp bring stone pegs and bring a decent mm. mallet because you're gonna have to smack the shit out of it to get them in but we do actually have uh official camping areas that are nice and soft and cuddly yeah, and, yeah. yeah there are areas there more more appropriate and less yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. difficult to put temp pegs in. It was it was it was funny though. Let's I mean, be your read your read bar seemed to be fine. Yes, we literally have bent rebar tent yeah. pegs, so yeah, it could it could take the fucking punishment. Oh, it'll, it was it'll fine. do it. It'll take a paste in like yeah. <laughs> so we've we've covered camping. We've covered the actual basic event itself and the facilities. Now, what's your plans for the next event? Have you got any more events coming up? Have you got any more sort of full weekend events planned with Ascension or are you open to doing more events of that nature with other people organizing? What's, what's your thought pattern with that? So truthfully, we are open to anything. Just give, give us a message um, that we, that the, there's that many social media accounts going at the moment. You can get a hold of somebody. Mm -hmm. um, there's either myself or there's Rob or uh, obviously it's going to come to me or Rob eventually. We are open to anything. Give us a shout. Let us know what you want to do. Um, you know, we, we, we're open to the to suggestion. We're open to ideas. Uh, yeah, bring it on. We've got, at the moment, the end of this month, um, the 27th, is our Operation Crossfire. That's a, that's the third part of a, of a three-part series, so that's now the ending of it. Mm -hmm. The end of next month, we've got Op Blackout, which is, uh, sorry, I, I've just totally blitzed over crossfire so th so that's going to be an eight hour mm -hmm. uh so we're going to do a little bit of sort of night gaming for those that want to have a mess with with some nods or torches which the site is phenomenal for nods by the way it's outrageous uh the end of next month so the end of november we've got off crossfire so that's more of our it touches a lot more on the mill sim style of play so there will mm -hmm. be a bigger command structure we always put commanders in we don't put shit commanders in either our commanders are highly experienced they are not only experienced in military but they are experienced in customer service that's my big rule it's mm -hmm. all right screaming and shouting at people but you know th those people are there to enjoy the day yeah don't the customers first as well one rule yeah. exactly so our command structure is phenomenal and actually what you will find is myself and rob will command we're not just site manager and site owner we'll command yeah. the team uh rob is commanding op four on the next event he's then commanding op four on the <laughs> event after you know he's not just a site owner the guy wants to play like mm -hmm. he wants to be in it he wants to get involved so he's the commander uh, i think so, that's yeah, important so with got... sites as well isn't it when the owners are still oh, very honestly, much got hand to, in the... i've got to fight the man to stop playing like i'm like rob i need you mate and he, he, he pair of us you will see the pair of us at an event. We will get on comms with each other and say, how's things going? One of us will say, good. And the next breath, you'll see us both in kit, in play. We want a game. We're gamers. Mm -hmm. The pair of us yeah, are yeah. gamers. We are all gamers. Anybody that's involved in Optac is a gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we don't want to sit back and do jack shit. We want to get involved. And, yeah. and Rob, <laughs> probably more than anyone, is, uh, and he's a good player. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we've got that coming up. Uh, we've got a conversation on Sunday that will be happening, uh, looking at December's events. Uh, January, January, February and March is what we want to now get booked, ready to go. Mm -hmm. There is a conversation happening that I will, uh, I am allowed to say, I suppose, uh, potentially for the May bank holiday, the beginning of May, that we are looking for Rumble 2. Uh, it will be bigger, better, badder. There will be, there will be all sorts going on which is That'd be great because cool. I've, I've got loads of time to organize things. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you actually have uh, enough time yeah. to organize things properly. You can breathe going between to, now and then. It's whatever, uh, you know, we will take from Rumble, whatever worked is fantastic, but I'm mm -hmm. not interested in that. I want to know what didn't work because I want to make that better. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it will be. Uh, there's, all, there's already been, excuse me, a number of... Um, discussions between myself and rob about what we felt wasn't the, at its top tier there's nothing wrong with it but it couldn't mm -hmm. be a lot better and so yeah. therefore that is what will be expanded on at the, at the next event mm -hmm. um and yeah so the, there's some there's we like i say we have monthly events so it's uh it's difficult to sit here and say oh this is what's going to be going on literally go on the website go on facebook yeah. or insta or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure there's a link yeah. to your guys website in yeah, the no, description that's appreciated. that's fantastic 
but we do we we as soon as we decide anything it gets posted mm -hmm. it's just straight up we don't no message just get it up let's let people know what's going on so what's your story how did you get involved with optact then because obviously what your sort of site manager head marshal type setup what is actually your story with optac because obviously rob's the owner your you've came in at what stage do you want the, are we doing the long version or do you want me to cut it entirely up to you the podcast <laughs> the if people want to watch they can watch if they want to skip ahead so be it um so well i'll give you the version uh, it, it, it doesn't there isn't really a short version i suppose uh so i i am a player i i have been for a number of years um and i played the optact for a number of years i thoroughly enjoyed it um i got involved with with team commanding things like that but i was i was a player i had no involvement staff wise uh but me and rob got along we always have done uh we've always had a right good laugh with each other we've always mm -hmm. had good conversations he's always taken on board my criticisms of things as well as my you know my positives um in february of this year February, second of february to very very specific i was diagnosed with stage three testicular cancer which was a bit shit <laughs> although yes that's, that's one way to put it yeah so, i mean don't get me wrong i kind of knew that i had an issue and i didn't yeah. do anything about it uh i couldn't deal with the pain any longer i went to a doctor's and all of a sudden it was like all systems go let's happen mm -hmm. i was then operated on on the 15th of february i they removed my left testicle which was the size of a fucking tennis ball like you know i'm a bloke it's what we do don't fucking do it go to the doctors but anyway yes um so that th then obviously the pathology came back from that and i had uh 100 seminoma and i was stage three and it had gone to my lymph nodes so i then started quite an intense quite brutal uh chemo regime um i was down for three rounds of quite an intense which i imagine some people out there might say that's pretty soft I felt like shit. All right. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I started off with that. So about, oh, probably after the second round of chemo, I was a bit like, I need to get the fuck out of my house. I, I am going mm -hmm. stir crazy. I've had enough. So I, I was part of a team and, uh, it was a group of mates, you know, and I said, look, let's go to Optac. Let's just, they, they started these beginner days, which are fantastic. Um, I messaged Rob and said, look, can me and the boys come down? Because truthfully, if they're a half day, I was like, I can't do a full day. Mm -hmm. um, I could barely go up the stairs without being out of breath. And that was genuine. I had to sort of have a break halfway up, but I thought I just need to get out of the house. Yeah. So we went down. Uh, I did about, I don't know, six and a half minutes of gaming and just thought I'm going to die. I'm not getting involved in this shit. Like, so I stood with Rob, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we were chatting away and, and there was a couple of uh, you know, martial related issues that came across and I just naturally helped him and came, you know, so I said, Got stuck in. yeah, you know, just mucked in and helped Rob. Um, and then I, I sort of steadily started to just venture down just to hang around really, because I had jack shit else to do, man. I was yeah, going to do. crazy. Yeah. Mm. I was just uh, like, give me something to do. So I was going down. Um, and then I was mucking in more and more. It just got more and more and more and more. And Rob called me one day and he said, look, uh, I've been after a site manager for a number of years, really. And you, you're kind of doing it. You, you, you know what <laughs> you're doing. Um, you, you, you're blah, 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 whatever he said. Um, is it too much or are you up for it? There's, there's, there is the game days, but there's also the behind the scenes that mm -hmm. I suppose a lot of people that don't run an airsoft site just don't see. There's paperwork, there's... You know, there's bookings to deal with. There's all sorts of shit to deal with. Liaising with vendors or whatever they yeah, might be. And, it, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot going on. So I said, well, look, I'll do what I can. Like, that's about it. <laughs> but if I tell you I've had enough, I've had enough. Uh, and that we shook hands and that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And since then, it was a little bit of like, you know, I had to learn on, a, on a, a business level. I had to learn Rob and he had to learn me. We have never fallen out apart from once which was a lover's tiff and we hugged we literally hugged after <laughs> you know but like kiffed. i've always said it's yeah yeah <laughs> fuck it you know but the thing you know what it's not about the fallout it's how you make mm. from that it's, it's how you yeah. move on anybody can fall out that's easy 
but it's how you move on. And like I've mm-hmm. said to him several times, if you and me don't knock each other out at least once in this relationship, then it's not a good one, is it? We're going to fall out. It's going to happen. It's just how we deal with that situation. Um, and that's literally how it was. So it, 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 it expanded. And then this random day, Rob was doing a safety brief and said, I'd like to introduce you to Al, who's my site manager. I was like, oh, fuck, am I? <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Right. Oh, and that no. was literally it, man. It was like, yeah, there's the bus. Get fucking under it. Like, All right, cheers, dude. And that's been it ever since. And we have a fantastic working relationship. We are not employer-employee. We are, we are mates. And mm. if he's doing something, I'll ring him and say, Rob, I think you're being a dick, and vice versa. And we, we work well together. And That's important. Absolutely. And he's, he's, he's one of, if not the best friend, you know, and, and it's not about, I don't know. It's not about like a wage and and a, and a job. This is, this is not a job for me. This is a a passion. And I think if you can get the two together, that's just unreal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, we, you know, I finished, I finished chemo. um, I had, uh, you know, scans, blood tests, things like that. And Rob was there on the phone every step of the way. How are you feeling? Are you up this weekend? I'm like, dude, I'll see you there, but I might die. But it is what it is. Let's see what happens. <laughs> is is that all uh, behind you now? Then all that sort of stuff. Is it all sort of put to bed? Uh, touch Just wood. Check up there <laughs> so we, you know, I'm we... still, you know, we are still in the early stages, but um, you know, touch wood. Hopefully, it's uh, yeah, the, the work's done. So you know, big shout out to Rosemere Cancer Centre at Preston. Fantastic place. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind, but you know, big no, shout it's out, fine. boys. No, if, if, it's if, important. If you need it's... to, like, don't don't be a fanny and go to the doctors, yeah, because yeah, it yeah. was fucking grim. Like, mm. don't be a fanny, go to the doctors, and uh, it happens. Believe me, it fucking happens. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully everything's behind. So on on top of, um, I feel like I'm waffling now, but it, it no, is part of it. Um, so on top of what uh, the chemo and things. So one of the particular drugs attacked my lungs, which is part and parcel. It can happen. It's pretty rare, but it can happen. Um, and it's uh, for those that want to uh, research, it's called bleomycin, and it's fucking brutal. And I have unfortunately lost 35% function of my lungs. So I can't, it's about the gas absorption. So I can't absorb oxygen uh, very well. So for the at least foreseeable and it's looking pretty permanent i my gaming days are pretty much uh zero it's just i ran i know tropical guys like i ran with you for about half an hour fucking awesome by the way like honestly genuinely now the best day i've had in a long time and we got to a point uh where we were up by checkpoint charlie and you guys were going to take the long way around and i was like yeah, I'm not dying in there, mate. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll die on the fucking road where someone can find me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's uh, that's been a big part of it as well. So um, the, has the that, toxicity of it was a bit ha, shit, Has so. that affected your choice in kit from when you do play? Because obviously you, you, you still want to play and you still yes. occasionally get out to play a little bit, obviously not as much as you used to. How has your choice of kit changed? since so before, obviously the, the long before everything happened i was like you know i was getting a bit tubby and you know i like my beer and and whatever else and uh i was starting to play a lot more cqb things uh at mm-hmm. a site in oldham i think it's either oldham or rochdale anyway um chemical Ursa, fantastic little site great site the lads are fantastic um and I run gas. I was on a G5, GHK G5. I was running gas. So, you know, there's the weight of the mags. And I thought, yeah, you know it's what? a heavy bit of kit. Yeah. I thought, do you know what? If I'm running around like a dick, I'm going to make something out of it. I'm going to weigh my kit down. I'm going to get some weight on me and start actually shredding this fucking beer gut. And it was working. You know, it was doing really well. So now I, in general, if I'm at Optap, you will see me with the belt kit on. I've got my belt kit. I've got you know, sidearm, I've got mags and, and a radio, but I very rarely wear a chest rig or a plate carrier because of the weight and, and, and things like that. Uh, however, ironically, this week, I have actually put my plate carrier back together and I'm, I am going to start actively wearing it to try and build on a little bit more stamina and a little bit of health, I suppose. So nice. it has it has had an impact. I won't lie. It absolutely has. But, it's worth it's it's worth documenting 
what you find does and doesn't work throughout this process because there Absolutely, is going to be yeah, yeah. it's i mean we're not exactly a gigantic community the airsoft community, like group as a whole mm -hmm. but there is going to be other people who have health issues who are getting back into i'll call it sport you know and yeah they're going to think right what's what's a wise choice to make a start getting back into and obviously having less stamina having less power behind your frame that you used to have it's going to affect your choices in kit and if you can document that it might help a few people along the way yeah. which yeah, is going to be if important I, if i can help one person I've, i have succeeded in everything i can do and you know again mm -hmm. like genuinely if anybody is suffering if anybody has gone through this message me ring me whatever mm -hmm. go find me through nemtag tropic thunder i don't care who it is message me you know get in touch with me and and i will absolutely help even if it's the beginning i don't give a shit what it is if you're scared to go to the doctor rob keeps trying to show me his balls and i'm just <laughs> like you know I, I'll, I'll i'll do my best like you know but just walk you on to me, site morning worried. morning look at my balls oh, yeah. oh, no, no. Genuine, genuinely <laughs> like he gets out of the car in a pair of shorts and says we well, can, can, can i show you my balls and like <laughs> you know what it's yes I, if, if, if anyone out there, there yes yeah 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 <laughs> if anyone is thinking oh, yeah i'm in a bit of a similar position i don't know who to go to message me i don't give a I don't give a flying fuck basically who you are or where you're from. Just give me send a send Al ball picks is what he's saying. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I slap that shit about. No, <laughs> but you know anyone anyone that's that's worried or has got an issue. Like, there's mm -hmm. my big shout out. You know, give us a yeah. shout. Message me, man. It's, mm -hmm. Don't don't suffer because trust me, it's fucking <laughs> it's shit. It yeah, really is. It's, it's not I'd really rather pleasant. you know I'd rather come and talk to somebody. So I'm always open mm -hmm. for that. Well, yeah, so I, am, is that, I am monitoring is that, kit. I am. Is that the gas gun put to one side because of the weight and the mags? Are oh, you moving no. to pistols no, now? No, I'm, or... I'm obsessed, man. I love it. I ran it. I ran it at uh, Rumble with these guys. It is an absolute animal of a of a of a rifle. I fucking love it. Uh, it punishes me every time I use it, but I don't game. Uh, is is the honest answer i try to game as much as possible and any time that i'm in i want to use my g5 so, i suppose you know, I'm, mlmg is running on the pintle mount that might be an option for you possibly yeah so i have uh, i actually have an aries l85a3 sorry but i do um because, you know <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's coming to nemtac soon but i was whatever. gonna say you only have to apologize to court <laughs> oh, <no. else. laughs> uh yeah so like that's a heavy bit of kit you know the g5 mm -hmm. is it's very very light full polymer so it doesn't weigh anything but the, the, obviously the mags do yeah um, and actually in the difference it does take more energy out of me carrying the l85 it, it does mm -hmm. and i do i run a sidearm um I, I don't really know why i run it on a game day we excuse me we decided a, a number of months ago that we were going to uh potentially start hit checking players and so i put a sidearm on the right i've got something to shoot them with i've never had to hit check a player so mm. i <laughs> I, I suppose i just have. carry it because i'm carrying it, it you know it is yeah. what it is but truthfully i don't really need to carry it uh i've never hit check a player in my life i don't need to um i, I would say is shit up with hit taking mm. it's phenomenal and we also have marshals that are quite happy to get stuck into a firefight there's nothing worse to, I, I watched some some videos and things like that uh you know people bitching about a hit hit checking and things like that. there's not a marshal in sight or the marshal stood 40 feet away watching Fuck no get in there get if you get shot it is what it is you're a marshal it's part of your job get in yeah. there and our marshals have not got an issue with that they are stuck in and they will stand two feet away and watch and mm. you know pull you out if you've been hit and yeah so I think part of that ha reason. comes from having players, doesn't it? You've got yeah. players working with you, not yeah. just somebody that's there to do a job on a weekend. Yeah. So our um, our big events on that note, so our big events like the Up Crossfire and Up Blackout that are coming, you um God, we, we don't have any marshals. We don't we don't need them. There are marshals, but they're player marshals, they're playing they yeah. will make themselves known it's not like you know they're not gonna i'm not gonna like diss certain sites but they're not gonna just whip out an, a high vis out of fucking nowhere and start going Ooh, i'm a marshal no absolutely not what they are gonna do is they're gonna contact the one and only marshal that's on site and that's me and i'm only marshalling because i can't play and i will muck in so you know i don't obviously you guys are more than welcome to cross fight you will see on that event that i will be in and out and i do my mm -hmm. brief and i'll say to you if I've got a high vis on, 
I'm marshalling. Please don't shoot me. If I don't, I'm free game. Like, bring it on. I'm gaming. And on, on our big events, our, our staff and our team run that well. There is only me that's there. And I'm only mm. there because I can't fucking game. <laughs> so, you know, we don't need 30 people in a high vis. We just mm. don't need it. I don't see the point in it. And I, I implemented that straight away and said, we just don't need it. It's yeah, unnecessary. Once, once you've embedded the yeah. marshals and they're doing the job properly and they know what to keep an eye out for, there's really no need for blokes in high vis because they it, it almost makes people play a bit more tentatively and a bit more conscientiously. If you know there's marshals knocking around but you can't identify them, You'll yeah. always you'll always be on your best behaviour, and I'm not yeah. saying that one's going to be no, you know a dickhead, but there is going to be the odd one who thinks, well, there's no marshals about. I'll fucking you know shrug. I'll I think for, shrug. A, for a, a really good example is Ollie. You know, you guys, Tropic Thunder came and you had a bit of an issue at your Bob and your spawn area. Don't know what you um, mean, wasn't there? Got, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it was a bit of an issue. Which <laughs> so so Big Tom straight on the comms to me was you know al i've got i've got an issue at uh, did it sound like that i don't think it sounded like that i think it I'm sounded not, different on the radio i'm not dropping big tom in the shit all right <laughs> no, i will i've played with tom <laughs> enough now <laughs> listen tom tom has got a heart too big for himself all right he's too soft but he's fucking awesome tom's tom's like he's he's great and he came on he panicked a little bit he's like oh you know whatever's going on i was there in what 30 seconds if that yeah and yeah. it was like you guys fuck off that way you guys go that way done like yeah. i'm not i have a great saying i don't like circles i'm not going to keep <laughs> going round in one so just go and enjoy the day and and that was that done yeah, and that's diffuse a great the situation example. as fast as yeah. possible i don't i don't stand for shit but also i get it if something's wrong that's fine we'll, we'll i'll just deal with it straight away mm -hmm. and that's a great example of how our marshalling team works it is get in contact with al or rob or what you know whoever whoever is senior that day and we will come and deal with it we will end it and move the fuck on yeah. there is no point going round and round and round there's just no point it's something's wrong done see you later and i like to say it was done dusted and everyone went, went oh, back 100%. to enjoy Gosh, the day but I just, yeah and it didn't change the, the day do you know what i mean yeah. it didn't get brought up and it was just everybody moved on yeah. and the, the the game carried on and like it never happened so that was and the that is game. the absolute best example of our marshalling team that it, it, it's it's brought to the attention of whoever is senior uh it's generally me because again i can't game but let's not rub it in um and it's done sorted move mm -hmm. on let's let's carry on with the game uh and it works it really really works so i think we're now at one hour and 11 minutes i think we're about ready to bring it to a close so what's the next event you've got coming up again so next we have got Operation Crossfire. Uh, it's part three of a three-part series. So it's the ending. It's an eight-hour battle sim. So is uh, that a game you could just drop into if you've not been to the previous yeah. ones? Yeah. Absolutely. So get yourself on their website. Get yourself booked on for that. It's definitely going to be worth a shout. If it's anything like the last event that I attended of their guys, it's going to be well worth attending, 100%. And you'll definitely see us at at least the next warm weather event because fuck camping in December and that sort of area. <laughs> and I don't mind playing in the rain. I don't mind playing in the snow. I'm not camping in the snow. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I have my limits. Um, so I'll definitely attend site before Christmas, I'm sure. I'll bring the lads down. Um, but that being that, I think we'll wrap this up. And also, don't forget to check your balls, like, subscribe, and <laughs> comment below about your balls, and send Al loads of ball picks because that's what he wants. And uh, I swear to God, to... if I start getting ball picks, they're getting fucking forwarded to you. Right. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Jokes. I can't see through shit. all that fluff either, boys. So have a good beat beforehand. You know what I'm saying? Yes, this this isn't a plug. For, this isn't <laughs> yeah. a plug for that um, I'm fucking a, shaving I'm company. Go company. Not my, my, my missus, my missus man, is going to yes. be going. Why are you talking about balls? Like it's because it's the boys. You don't you don't understand. <laughs> Come on, boys. Check um, them balls. Oh, anything to add before we finally sign off and uh, finish no, the video? Just, just a big thanks for a good event. Um, mm. Again, pat on the back to all the boys. Everybody worked really well. Um, yeah, can't wait for the next one. Mm, happy days, guys. The, the thank the thanks is out to you guys. Really, like mm. the, without the players, what what are we? We're just a load of guys stood about waiting for people. So, you know, thanks to That's thanks it. to the players. Seriously, thanks to the players. And now, yeah, it's what we do. So, like I said before, like and subscribe. Don't forget to keep an eye out for following content. We've got. Uh, 
we've got an interview. We've got another negative airsoft um, podcast coming up soon. We've also got an interview with Airsoft Alphonse, who attended the event. He's a nice chap, so looking forward to that. And uh, I'll catch you guys soon and see you in the next one. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.